The Ballast Water Management Convention identifies four different methods to achieve the aims of the convention. Ballast Water Exchange, Ballast Water Treatment, Ballast Water Isolation and Sediment Management. A ship-specific Ballast Water Management Plan that describes which methods are used and how compliance is achieved must be developed. G4 Guidelines for Ballast Water Management and Development of Ballast Water Management Plans Contains detailed advice on ballast water management, recording procedures, and content of the ballast water management plan. All ships must have a ballast water record book. The record book must show records of Ballast taken on board Ballast circulated or treated Ballast discharged into the sea Ballast discharged into reception facilities and ballast discharged accidentally or under exceptional circumstances. The book may be electronic or paper. Every entry must be signed by the ballast water management officer and every page signed by the master. The record book must be kept on board for two years from the last date of entry, then maintained by the company for a minimum of three years. The minimum content requirements, which are stated in Appendix 2 to the Annex. Most port states require numerous reports to be submitted in advance of an arrival in their territorial waters, or even in the exclusive economic zone. These borders are depicted in the nautical chart. This includes reports on ballast water management activities. IMO has developed a standard reporting form, but national rules also exist. Check with the port state what their rules are. Note that the USCG has issued rules with penalty provisions if a report is not submitted. The ship owner has a number of ballast water management methods to choose between. A combination of methods can also be used. Depending on the trading area, the age of the ship and the planned maintenance cycle, ballast water exchange may not be sufficient on its own. Careful consideration of the methods is necessary, and the choices should be documented in the ship's ballast water management plan. The G6 Guidelines for Ballast Water Exchange describes three different main methods for ballast water exchange. Sequential method Flow-through method of which the natural exchange method can be considered a special case, and dilution method. Each method has advantages and disadvantages. The G6 guidelines provide detailed advice on safety precautions to be observed during the exchange. A ballast tank is first emptied and then refilled with replacement ballast water to achieve at least a 95% volumetric exchange. Replacement ballast water is pumped into a ballast tank, allowing water to flow through overflow or other arrangements. This means that the tank may be subjected to higher pressures than normal. Natural exchange can be considered a special case of the flow-through method, but without using pumps. Water enters through an opening in the forward end, is led into the tanks and exits at the aft end. This method is limited to tanks below the waterline. Replacement ballast water is filled through the top of the ballast tank with simultaneous discharge from the bottom, at the same flow rate and maintaining a constant level in the tank. When the sequential or flow-through methods are used, particular attention must be on stability and stresses on the hull. These methods require the removal of large quantities of water, 
and at sea the static and dynamic forces working on the hull must be calculated carefully. Uneven load distribution causes shear forces and bending moments to act on the hull, and the movement through waves adds torsional forces, particularly on long ships. The dynamic forces working on the ship at sea requires careful calculation of bending and shearing forces to ensure they stay within allowable limits throughout the exchange process. Managing ballast water to the D1 standard using the exchange method is gradually being phased out as more approved ballast water treatment systems become available. The D2 standard using an approved ballast water treatment system is now required for all new vessels. The rules for when an existing vessel must have a ballast water treatment system have been subject to change and do differ between the US Coast Guard's requirements and the IMO. The current US Coast Guard's requirements are that existing vessels must be fitted with an approved ballast water treatment system at their first scheduled dry docking after either January 2014 for vessels with a 1,500 to 5,000 cubic meters ballast water capacity or January 2016 for vessels with a ballast water capacity greater than 5,000 cubic meters. The IMO deadlines for existing ships depend on the International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate renewal date. Existing ships with an IOPP renewal survey before September 2019 must already comply. Those with renewal surveys after 8 September 2019 must meet the D2 standard by their next renewal survey date. All ships must meet the D2 standard by 8 September 2024. We will look at ballast water treatment systems in the next chapter.